Hey guys, welcome to today's Vehicle Visionary. Today I borrowed this 2021 Chevrolet Traverse. This is the 1LT trim level and I will list all of the different trim levels and their base prices on the screen for the Traverse. I borrowed this model from my friends at Red River Chevrolet. This is the silver ice metallic exterior color. We'll take a quick look around the vehicle. As you can see, I have all the lights on, the tail lights and the headlights. We'll take a quick look around the front. Have the hazard lights on just so you can see the indicators on. Can't necessarily see everything because it's kind of bright out here. But you do have the HID headlamps and the LED daytime running lamps. And as you can see also, you have the fog lights on the lower portion of the bumper right there. Probably kind of hard to see with the glare out here. It's a little bit bright, but you do have the turn signal indicators built into these power mirrors. Can fold those manually if you would like to, as you can see right there. There are foldable, adjustable power, but foldable manually, as you can see right there. Traverse logo. And the wheels are 18 inches on this model. And if you're looking for, as you, if you saw my video recently, I did a video on the five passenger two row Chevrolet Blazer. This is a seven passenger three row SUV, if that's something you may be interested in. Now, as we take a look under the hood, this is the 3.6 liter V6 power plant. This is a front wheel drive model. You will find a nine speed automatic transmission. And I'll give you all the numbers on the screen, horsepower, torque, MPGs, all that good stuff. Now I did mention the turn signal indicators built into the side view mirrors. And of course there are a lot of safety features you're gonna find with this 1LT Traverse. And I will list those on the screen for you, at least a few of them. I try not to give you too much to look at and I couldn't give you all of that in the video without, well, probably boring it to death. But if you ever want to know more than what I cover in this video, always check the description on the video itself because I always link to the dealership's website, in this case, Red River Chevrolet. Down there in the description, you will find a link to this very vehicle if you want to know more. Now, of course, you do have a power lift gate here. And we'll just take a quick look, of course. Got your antenna up there on the top. Got a roof spoiler right here on the rear. And there are a number of options for opening this rear lift gate. Get the key out here, the remote. Does it push button start? You also have remote start right there. There is a button to open the rear lift gate right here if you want to use that, or you can just push this twice on the remote to open that easily as well. And I'll show you a little trick. If you ever have trouble from the rear, let me just show you real quick opening this and it doesn't seem to want to open. Don't panic. Here is what the problem likely is. Here is another option for opening the rear lift gate. But if you turn it all the way to the right and you hear that ding from the interior, that means you have locked the rear lift gate. But you can also let it open all the way or you can open it three fourths depending on what your situation is. And like I said, this is a three row SUV as you can see right here. And to maximize your cargo space, which will just pull, this will be a little hard to do, probably one-handed. Let's see if I can do that. There we go. I'll only do one side, but all you have to do is pull on that strap to lower your rear seats here. Pull that back up. And here underneath the floor, you do have a little bit of storage down there. You might say, where's the spare tire? It is located underneath the rear of the vehicle. So you do have a spare tire. It's not a full size, but you do have a spare tire nonetheless. And just for connectivity back here, you do have a 12 volt power outlet. Tell me guys, how many of you would like to begin seeing maybe some of these manufacturers do away with those 12 volt power outlets and start putting in a USB port instead, or would you prefer both? Always curious to know what you have to say. Now, I already have this seat moved up. This is how you access the rear seats. I'm just gonna pull on that. I don't know if I can do that one handed. Let's, let's find out. But this is how you get into the rear seats. There we go, that wasn't too bad. The seat will slide forward on its track and you can use this lever right here to lay the seat flat. And that's how you're gonna maximize your cargo space and get to those numbers that I put up on the screen just a little while ago. Just to give you a look around back here, 
for your third row passengers. There are USB ports. The That's on the left side of the vehicle or the driver's side. And it's a mirror image on the passenger side as well. And in addition to the two USB ports in the rear, your middle seat passengers have two more right here. And here are the controls for your air conditioning. You do have tri-zone air conditioning in this Traverse. You've got air conditioning vents for the middle row and rear seat passengers. And just a quick look into the front seat before we hop up there and take our interior tour of the front. And of course, before we hop inside, of course, you do have passive entry. So what you're gonna do is push that. That locks the doors on the front and or the rear doors, as long as you have the remote. And in the interest of fair reporting, if someone thinks, well, what if somebody walks up to your vehicle when you're sitting in traffic and tries to break in? Unless they have this, it won't work, your remote. That's the only way that's going to work. Just so you know, that safety feature is built in. Now, you do have an adjustable passenger seat, but it's manually adjustable, just so you know, as are those middle row seats. So if your rear seat passengers need some extra leg room, there are adjustments on those seats underneath that allows for moving those seats back and forth. And just a quick look into the glove box. I didn't even know we got a brief glimpse of the driver's side door earlier when I was showing you how to use the button down there to open the rear lift gate and control things there. We'll just take another look real quick. Of course, the driver's seat is power. And here are the controls for your headlights that we took a look at earlier. You do have a manually adjustable tilt and telescopic steering wheel. And if you're wondering what's new for 2021, the only change is that Chevy Safety Assist replaces the driver confidence package as far as the safety features. And we looked at those earlier, at least a brief summary on the screen. Here's what you're going to have for your instrument cluster. Easy to use, but very effective, of course. And as you can see, if you want to, you can have a digital speedometer there. You do have cruise control right here. And of course, you can go through a lot of different features here, some of which I'm probably not gonna be able to show you because they're in demo mode, but just so you can see, you've got several different features and functionalities that you can go through here if you want to. And of course, and of course, Chevrolet's infotainment screen, the GM infotainment screen, very simple to use. No changes really needed there, at least not in my personal opinion. And you do have teen driver mode available, Apple CarPlay and Android Auto also, which if you're not familiar with this technology, don't let it scare you away, very easy to use. But that allows you to pair your phone and basically have all the information from your phone available through your infotainment screen. And teen driver mode is available. You're just gonna go to settings as I just did over here to vehicle and scroll all the way down here to teen driver. And I have a little tutorial that I used or made on my channel recently that showed you how to set that up as well as valet mode. So a very simple system. Uh, of course, you've got another USB port or two USB ports right there, another 12 volt power outlet. And of course, you've got your drink holders and your shifter here, power parking brake and your driving modes here. All you're gonna do is toggle that back and forth, the dial, and you only have a couple of different driving modes here. And today we don't need it, but it's cool enough to possibly need it in the near future here. And even in Northwest Louisiana, we do get snow occasionally every once in a while. There are your two driving modes and a power parking brake. And here's another one of those multitaskers that I often talk about. You have an armrest that you can use here with the console, of course, that is ultimately what it is, is a console, but it's also doubling as an armrest, and there is what you have, actually quite a bit of space there in the console. Okay, guys, we're gonna hop out on the road here for a little test drive with the Traverse. And of course, like I said, this is a front wheel drive vehicle, and it makes me think about the fact, that since it's pretty chilly today in Northwest Louisiana, in the 30s today, maybe getting into the low 40s, that's chilly for us, at least, depending on where you live. But that makes me think about the fact that this being a front-wheel drive vehicle, of course, it's gonna be good for driving in the snow. And by the way, I've thought about either adding to this channel or starting a second channel of bad drivers of Northwest Louisiana, as you just saw, that vehicle back there, the black car, 
turned right in front of the Jeep in front of us right there, which was quite interesting. Thankfully, they didn't get hit. And I'll tell you what, I get enough footage here to, to do that. But as far as how the Traverse drives, of course, it's comfortable. I like the ride quality of this model. Plenty of room, plenty of cargo space. You know, you're, even your middle and rear seat passengers have a reasonable amount of room. Now, this isn't a super powerful motor, but it will get down the road as you need it to, the way everything's geared. Having that nine-speed automatic transmission, when you don't have a lot of horsepower, that does help make a difference. I do like the way the steering responds to your touch as the driver. Of course, the steering wheel itself is comfortable, but the responsiveness is good too. And we'll let this Jeep turn real quick get a little bit of road noise but just a little bit of an acceleration test there of course I probably would be a lot better off there's another one of those great drivers as you can see cutting in front of all the traffic here but I'm gonna get down the road here just a little bit you get a little bit of road noise but you know if you were driving down the road with the radio on obviously for the purpose of the video I do not have the radio on right now because that would be a big distraction plus it'd probably get a copyright hit from YouTube we don't want to do that but the road noise is not bad. You got a little bit coming into the interior, but not too terribly bad. And like I say, if you had somebody else in the vehicle with you and you were conversing back and forth or the radio was on or whatever the case may be, well, I think that would really tremendously cut down on that. And it's not that bad to begin with. Hopefully uh, what you hear on the video helps to know whether it's too bad or not. But like I said, it's not bad. The steering wheel itself, like I say, comfortable. I just like the way it feels. A lot of nice creature comforts here. Of course, as I said, this is the 1LT trim level, and I listed all of the trim levels earlier. And of course, there are so many different options when it comes to the trim levels, uh, as I could list on the screen. I'm not gonna list everything because it would just be too much to read. But like I said, if you want to know more, of course, you can find that uh, on your own. And as we go through a couple of little corners here, the Traverse handles pretty well. Not being a full-size SUV, of course, you're going to have some good handling characteristics. You won't have as much body roll. But of course, this isn't meant to be something you really throw into the turns at a high rate of speed. Overall, a very roadworthy vehicle, enjoyable to drive, comfortable, good handling, and just a lot of versatility here. Well, I've got to say thanks to my friends at Red River Chevrolet for loaning me this Traverse for the day, and all of you for being kind enough to take the time to watch. As always, guys, let me know down in the comments section what you want to see me feature and exactly how you want me to handle it. What do you want me to cover? What do you want me to talk about? All that kind of stuff. Tell me down in the comments and I will do everything I can to make that happen for you. Thank you for taking the time to watch. I look forward to seeing you in my next video. Have a great day. Bye-bye.